What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. And today we're going to talk about how I saved my first $100,000 by age 28, and how you can also save your first $100,000 in a relatively short amount of time. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest with everyone watching this video. It's not saying that I have $100,000 in my savings account just sitting there. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that I've saved and accumulated $100,000 total, and it's through multiple different accounts, which I will talk about and show you what I'm talking about in this video so it all makes sense by the end. This video is not a flex. It's not bragging or anything like that. There's plenty of people my age that have more of a net worth. There's plenty of people, you know, younger that have more and things like that. And a, a lot of what I'm about to show you is actually things that I learned, I feel, late in the game. Like, as I was going, I learned these things late, and I was like, oh, man, let me get on top of this and actually do better. And it actually helped me save up my first $100,000 even faster. So anyway, we're going to jump right into this. And if you're concerned about my voice, I'm very congested. But I'll be all right. So anyway, I have seven places where I've been putting my money that has been allowing it to get to the $100,000 mark. So... Of course, I have my savings account and I have my checking account in there. But then I have my emergency fund, which exists inside of a high yield savings account with Marcus by Goldman Sachs. So that money earns about 5% per month. And if you don't have a high yield savings account yourself, I definitely recommend you checking out the link in my description. It's called Marcus by Goldman Sachs. They're very, very good and they will definitely make sure your money grows. But anyway, on top of that, I have my 401k, life insurance, stock investments, Roth IRA. And all of that adds up to $119,948. So the reason I really wanted to break that down is because when you see the title saying I saved $100,000, I don't want you to think that I misled you or said that it's only in my savings account. That's, that's not the case. And when you hear that someone is worth a certain amount, it's not saying that that's how much they have in their bank account. That's how much their assets add up as a total. And I've always been curious about what my net worth is. I actually got infatuated about my net worth because every year I'm always adding up numbers and going from account to account to account to account and how much do I have in this one, how much do I have in that. So I, I just made myself a net worth tracker <laughs> so I can look at all my assets, all my liabilities and just go from there. And that's going to tell me exactly what my net worth is, exactly how much my assets are and, and all that stuff. So I thought it was pretty cool to have. Anyway, if you want something like that, there is a link in the description. And if you don't know, your net worth is your total assets minus all of your liabilities, and that's gonna be your net worth. So what we just covered in this is not my total net worth, but my assets. I do still have student loan debt, so my total net worth is 95,000 and something dollars, but it's not like I'm gonna use my assets to pay off my debt. I'm gonna keep building those assets and letting them grow exponentially, which is why the $119,948 is how much I've been able to save throughout my adult life. I'm 28 right now, and I started my career when I was 21. And I wanna talk a little about my priorities and how this came about, because these didn't happen overnight. Like, the order that you see these in, because I've put these on the screen a few times, the order that you see these in is the exact order that I built these in. <clears throat> started with my savings account. I, I went Dave Ramsey style, went to the $1,000, and then went to something else. Then. I was like, nah, I want to at least have 2000 So that was when I put 2000 in my savings account. But then I was like, you know what? I like having a checking and a savings and seeing them both. But I feel like my checking gets down to almost zero before I get paid every time. So even though my savings is growing, I need to have a buffer. So so I like to keep about an $800 buffer, between seven and $800 buffer inside of my checking account. So that way... No matter what, I have that level of comfort. So if something does come up, I don't ever want to have to reach into my savings account. 
I have that buffer in my checking account to look out for. Once I got that squared away, I started building my emergency fund because that's where the big dollars are going and that's where I like to put at least $700 a month and that's inside of my high yield savings account with Marcus by Goldman Sachs. And the thing is, you don't realize it, but 5% per month is extra money on top of the money that you're putting into it. So it's growing and growing and growing and it's, it's a good feeling to have. The reason the 401k is so far down the list is because when I got my first ever full-time job, they didn't allow us to start putting money into the 401k until we were three months in. So three months in, I'm already thinking about savings, getting the buffer for my checking and, and all that good stuff and building an emergency fund. Didn't have much in my emergency fund, but I was like, let me go ahead and start putting money into my 401k. And here's the thing that I want everybody to get out of this video. I didn't take my 401k very seriously at first. I, I knew I needed to start it and put money into it, but I chose the lowest, and I mean the lowest percentage you could put in there. And I put 4% of every single paycheck inside of the 401k. And my paychecks at the time, gross were like, I think $2,500. So 4% of 2,500 was going into the 401k. That's $100. I just want to put that out there. That's $100. So it wasn't a lot, but it did add up little by little. And here's the thing. Check this out. I chose the lowest percentage in which my company would agree to match. And the way that they matched me was 50 cents on the dollar. So every $100 I put in, they gave me 50 back inside of that. So that 150 would grow and grow and grow. So when they add their money on top of it, free money, they it allows you to multiply your 401k faster. And I did this at 21, so you could imagine it grew and grew and grew. The more time you have in that stock market, the more your money is gonna grow. I'm not here to lecture you about the stock market, I'm just telling you how I made my money. Anyway, next one is life insurance, and I'm specifically talking about whole life. I'm not talking about the life insurance you have at your job or anything like that. That's cool, and I do have that. It's just not what I'm considering as part of my net worth. This is cash that is growing inside of my whole life life insurance policy that I don't ever plan on touching, but it is there. And there are ways that you can borrow against that and be tax free and all that good stuff. So that's just good to know. But the true reason that I got that is because you have term life and you have whole life. Term life insurance is like if you die within 10 years, your family gets you know, a million or 500,000 or whatever policy you sign up for. But once that term ends, let's say it's your number 11 and you haven't renewed any policies, that, that's it. Like, ain't nothing happening. That's zero dollars. But if you have a whole life policy, you have a whole different set of cash off to the side that's also growing and you can also use it while you're alive if you need to. So it was just something that really got me thinking and I was like, you know what, why not? And it's growing my net worth and it's just a good thing to have. And it's more so for my family, not for me, but it's good for me to have. And the next thing I went to, surprisingly, was stock investments, like individual stocks. So I was heavy on knowing individual companies. I was a complete tech nerd, especially when I was in high school, looking at all the different devices, the cell phones, laptops, looking at all their specs how fast their processor is and all that stuff. So naturally I looked into like companies such as Apple and Visa and Microsoft and Tesla and things like that. And I started putting money into them and buying full shares of them and just letting them sit. And surprisingly, even though I didn't really know what the heck I was doing about investing however many years ago, it, it worked. The, the account grew pretty well. I, I've made my mistakes here and there, but that's, that's what I did. And, um, now that account has 20 something thousand dollars in it and it just continues to grow and grow and i do want to point out that the investment aspects of of this list these have the biggest chunks of money in them that represent majority of my net worth so i do like to save and i am serious about saving but once i hit a certain point i was like okay i'm gonna put i'm gonna go all in on investing now and it's because that's just my comfort level and knowing that i have I'm young and I know that I have a bunch of time in the market, so I'm gonna put a bunch of money into investments because I feel comfortable with my savings and my emergency fund. It's gonna depend on how your priorities are personally, but even just like the 401k, 
I completely skipped over this earlier, but my 401k is just conventional wisdom that once you get a job, you're supposed to put your money into your 401k. That thing has grown. We're talking almost $70,000. That's just following conventional wisdom and just having that extra money going into your 401k. That can help you get to $100,000 a lot quicker than you think. Something to think about. But yeah, stock investments, that's something that I don't necessarily say, hey, you should definitely go all in for individual stocks. Not what I'm saying. You want to look at your 401k and your Roth IRA first. I just did it in a weird order for some reason. But when you look at stock investments, I think that should be the last thing you look at. And you should look more so at your 401k and your Roth IRA. Because for one, they're tax advantaged. And I'll make separate videos about both of those. And two... They're invested in funds that can give you clues on what to invest in. Again, that deserves its own video. I, I don't, I literally don't have the time to explain every single point when it comes to that in this video, but I will make a separate video about that. But once you get your 401k locked in good, then I recommend having a Roth IRA because they're going to offset each other with their tax advantages. And then your Roth IRA, keeping it simple, keeping a nice, simple ETF like voo or vti that's personally what i do and it's up i mean it's it's a very simple thing to do but it's something that a lot of people don't do and then the stock investments should come later and you should look at the top companies inside of those etfs and other funds that you're already invested in that are already doing well and that's going to give you clues on what good companies would be to invest in and right now i'm only holding like five different companies right now in my stock portfolio but every single portfolio i have is up right now and even when we had our little crashes and everything like that last year and the year before that they were still up and it's because i chose wisely but i say all that to say this this is an accumulation of mainly my investments on top of some of the cash that i have on on hand in case i ever need it but that's how it grows it's not just by conventionally saving and then getting a raise and then saving that extra percentage more like that can definitely help but that's not going to make your money grow exponentially and eventually become a hundred thousand two hundred thousand a million dollars so even if you're only able to save like 10 percent of your income put a portion of it into something that's going to make it grow look my 401k started with 100 dollars going into it and now like seven years later we're up to 60 something grand and that's going to be a portion maybe not all of your net worth should be purely in investments but a big chunk it, the more you put in investments and they have to be safe investments which is why i have an investing course and that's why i talk about investing so much on this channel once you choose the right investments making your money grow becomes so much easier it just takes time at that point and then the comfort money that helps you sleep at night knowing that you have a few thousand in your savings and maybe you know five figures in your emergency fund that's sleep at night money if you want to keep adding to that little by little definitely do it it's only going to give you more peace of mind and then also on top of all of that stuff what i really was intentional about was being focused on my career and being aggressive about my career and when i didn't like a certain thing i didn't like how i was being treated or i didn't like how i was getting paid i was like you know what if they're not going to value me, I'm going to value myself and get on up out of here, moved across the country, worked at a better job, a more technically advanced, technologically advanced job, higher pay, more life balance. So I felt like I was rich because I was getting paid more, working half as much, literally half as much. And having work life balance and being able to do things and have like hobbies outside of work, it was the weirdest thing. But having that free time enabled me to one, start this YouTube channel, two, make more money, write my book, go for a promotion, get a promotion, things like, you know what I'm saying? So those things have added up. And then the more money I get, now I know, I know the more money that I get, I need to treat it like it's not mine, like it's going to the investments. And some of it can be portioned off the fun and realization and things like that, but majority of it, it's gotta go into investments, it's gotta go into savings, it's gotta go into the future. That is how I saved my first $100,000 by age 28. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.